Hi, this is Anthony Sider. The following is the Meet the Mediator podcast created as part of Family Mediation Week 2021. Hope you enjoy. Great. Well, good morning and thank you so much for joining me for the first of our uh, Meet the Mediators discussion. We are lucky to have mediators from all across the the country in England and in Wales um, joining us to discuss a little bit about their pathway into family mediation and what you enjoy about um, being a family mediator. Um, I'd like to start, if I could ask the two of you to, to introduce yourselves, that would be great, and then we can get into it from there, really. Um, Samira, would you like to, to start off just um, by giving us a bit of an introduction into your uh, pathway to mediation? Yeah, uh, my name is Samira. Uh, I'm from, uh, I'm working for a company called Community Accord, based in Blackford, um, and I am a newly trained family mediator. Um, so currently I'm working towards uh, accreditation with Family Mediation Council. I'm a member of the Family Mediation Association and also College of Mediators. Great, thank you. And Toitha, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, my name's Toitha. I'm, um, I've been a mediator for 20 years now, just going into my 21st year. Um, I am a solicitor mediator. I work at Setford Solicitors. Um, I also mediate for a number of um, mediation bureaus around the country. I basically, when I'm meeting face to face, I'm normally in England, <coughs> England, normally in London, Kingston, and um, other parts of Surrey. Um, but because I'm doing everything on Zoom at the moment, the world is my oyster. <laughs> I'm accredited with Resolution, and I'm an accredited mediator with Family Mediation Council. Um, I also train uh, training mediators. Um, and I'm also a law lecturer for my skin sins. Oh, wow. Very busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And, and thank you both so much for, for joining me. As I say, my, my name's Anthony and I'm a uh, family mediator working um, self-employed, but I do most of my work for the Family Mediation Centre in Staffordshire. Um, but I'm living right on the um, England-Wales border. Um, and as you probably picked up from my accent, I'm not from this hemisphere. I'm from New Zealand, moved here just over a year ago, and I was a family mediator there um, as well. So... I mean, we can hear just from what the two of you have very initially said that you've both had, you know, slightly different pathways to, medi to mediation and, and Samara, you're working towards accreditation. I'm also working towards accreditation, but a, 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 in a, a slightly different way because I was practicing back in, in New Zealand. So we're, we're also at three different levels of our practice as well, which is great um, to see that, that diversity and it'll be interesting to sort of hear about different experiences. When you first um, looked into family mediation training, is that something that you were sort of actively looking to move into or is it just an opportunity that, that popped up? Well, I heard about it in my line of business. Um, I am a family lawyer, have been for several years now, several decades even. Um, and it just made sense that it was a way how a way for people to move forward, minimum fuss, minimum um, court intervention, um, and then get on with their lives. And more importantly, the children suffer less distress. So I just thought, actually, it makes a lot of sense. For those people that would be interested in mediation, it would save a lot of time, anxiety, stress, etc. So it was a natural leap for me, and that one that I particularly enjoy. And because you also see children as part of your practice, is that right? And, okay. and is that something that you've noticed um, has been picked up a, a bit more in, in the more recent years in terms of clients being aware and in terms of, um, I guess, mediators offering it as part of their practice? Well, I, I think, yes. I mean, parents are quite astonished usually that um, mediators can see the children because usually they're just children and they don't normally get asked or consulted. Mm. Um, and when you explain child inclusive mediation to them, many of them say, yes, I'd like you to speak to the child. And speaking to the child, it's just, it's, it gives you a totally different um, viewpoint um, because often they're saying different things to their parents and the child will tell you normally, quite honestly, what's going on. Um, and some of the conversations I've had with children are really interesting, like, can we play, can we play a, a game now instead of yeah. talking? And it's just... They're so natural and so um, honest. And then being able to feed that back to the children, uh, to the parents, the parents can actually understand it is their child making those comments 
not me putting words in their mouths and it's just very helpful yeah it's quite a quite a powerful tool sometimes to sort of get um get clients to i guess re rethink what their priorities are and usually hearing you know some direct feedback from their children can can be quite useful to to help bring people together um Samira, I, I understand that you were working as an advocate and were also or are also accredited as a civil mediator. What what sort of made you look into family mediation as a as another way of um, mediating, I guess? Well, my initial um, interest in mediation um, commenced when I was at bar school. Uh, we did the alternative dispute resolution module and within there we had negotiation, arbitration, and mediation. But it was mediation that I found the best way of resolving disputes. But because I wasn't quite sure of what the path was in terms of going into mediation, um, I decided to put, put it on the back burner, so to speak. Uh, and I then, um, for a number of years, I was a civil litigation advocate across the country, attending many hearings for, uh, relating to civil law. It wasn't until I did a little bit more research that I came across uh, civil and commercial mediation. So I undertook um, my training for that. But then again, uh, I uh, came across another hurdle because I wasn't quite sure of how to get into family mediation. It was always a, a tricky point for me. So again, I put it on the back burner and I just believe at the right time, I got the right opportunity um, when I started working at Community Accord. But one of my first questions was in the interview do you do family mediation and the answer at that time was no so i did what community accord were doing scnd um, and workplace and neighborhood mediation and then again the right place the right opportunity it was family mediation um, that the company were talking about and then i also saw there was a wider need in our community of where i'm based in bradford it's um, a lot more Asian based and um, I saw a lot more clients coming forward asking about family mediation so it was a bit of both really for me in terms of a wider need in the community and myself I've always had an interest uh, so it's a bit of a mix for me. Right. And and you know I, I have a similar background really I um, trained um, as for my bachelor degree was a bachelor of laws but I never practiced I went straight into um, a, a case management role with a, a mediation company and initially was hoping to get a role in their um, accident compensation service uh, but wasn't successful in that and instead got put into the the family team and it was just such a great fit um, I think for me a big part of why uh, family mediation is something I feel so strongly about and, and definitely want to stay in this area of work is uh, my own personal background as um, a, a child with separated parents and just thinking that there must be a better way for this to work. And uh, so obviously the three of us have, have come from various legal backgrounds or legal training. Um, but of course, there's so many of our colleagues who come from different areas and that must be something that you see as part of your, your work as a trainer, Tuitha, is the, the various backgrounds. It, it's amazing how diverse the backgrounds are. I have trained people who have been hairdressers, uh, police officers. I think the most memorable one was um, a lady who looked after uh, Arabian stallions. Um, breeding uh, of Arabian stallions. And I just thought, I, it's just so unexpected that somebody from that background would be interested in family mediation. Um, but yes, it, anyone from any walk of life uh, could become a family mediator. Yeah, and I think sometimes people who are considering whether or not they want to become a family mediator and, and don't have that legal background wonder if that is perhaps something that they're um, going to you know that, that that's a, going to be a gap in their knowledge but the the role that you do is to provide some of that legal training and then that's there's right. other training as part of um, various foundation courses for people who come from legal backgrounds that maybe don't have some of those other skill sets as well yeah. it, it's also really interesting to hear both of your both of you sort of speak about you know your, your local communities and I think think that that's something important for potential clients who are looking into mediation there's so many mediators from so many different backgrounds and with different um, experiences that you will almost certainly find someone who will be able to understand your particular family context it's you know we've got a range of experience and a lot of us 
work uh, you know behind the scenes with different bits and pieces to expand that whether it be as a um, trainer as part of that foundation course or I know Samara you um, are, are joining me as part of the Family Mediation Council's Equality Diversity and Inclusion Working Group as well um, to just try and grow and uh, grow the awareness but also grow just generally uh, the level of diversity amongst mediators. What, what do you enjoy about family mediation that you think, you know, if, if someone was in a, a particularly difficult situation and they were looking at a way of resolving their dispute, what's something about family mediation that you would want to share with people that you think is such a great benefit? I think it's actually helping people who are in a bad place move forward and understand that, yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, there's going to be some difficult discussions to get through but actually moving them along getting them to the other side empowering them with information and enabling them to make their own decisions because they know themselves they know their children better than anybody else so it makes sense to be able to help them to make those decisions rather than maybe a, a court ordered um, arrangement mm -hmm. so it's just empowering people and moving them on right Samira? I would totally agree with what Tahita uh, <laughs> said uh, in terms of family mediation and also add to that in terms of the experiences that I've been having is um, you'll be able to build a good rapport with clients and that gives them a good satisfaction that they are able to discuss with you their concerns and what current position they're in and they're always thinking, how can I move forward with this, as Tahita mentioned? And it's always talking about the future and they want a clean break and it's working towards that, that there can be some barriers in place and it's helping them. Well, my experience has been where there's been the relationship aspect and then the children aspect. And because we focus on child arrangements and the financial aspect, um, we help parents to focus on those two areas as opposed to the relationship where a lot of our clients, um, the relationship has come to an end uh, and they want to have a clean break. Uh, so family mediation uh, and having joint sessions really assists with that. Yeah, I, I completely agree with both of you. So I'm sure you're, you're not surprised to hear. I, I think a lot of the time clients uh, don't realize how collaborative mediation can be. Um, I think sometimes people's perception is that it's an instead of process. So instead of court or instead of counseling or instead of getting legal advice, but actually mediation works best when it's working in conjunction with all the various services, because it's so important that people get the, you know, support and advice that they need so that they can be in the best position to mediate. Um, is it something that you, you know, believe could grow further if more people are made aware of it or, or what do you think needs to happen to, uh, to to grow family mediation to either? I think it is about awareness. Um, I mean, I, I'm not the oldest mediator around, um, but in 20 years, I've seen how the, um, the, the situation has changed, how um, more and more people are becoming aware of mediation, but particularly through MIAMS, Mediation Information Assessment Meetings. Um, and it's helping to deliver the message that there are other options, alternative methods of dispute resolution that might be more acceptable to uh, a couple rather than going through the court route, especially with legal aid being pretty much withdrawn from family work. Um, rather than go through that stress and anxiety of court proceedings, um, you can try and help yourself with a third party who's gonna be impartial and help you. Help, it's, it's a bit of hand-holding, but it's also empowering them, um, which I think is really important because quite often when a relationship breaks down, it, it can be very traumatic. Mm -hmm. And it's, in a, it, it's ensuring that people understand that this is just a temporary phase. Um, things can improve and will improve. Yeah, a lot of the time it is that, you know, that very real feeling of it's all happening now. Um, and, and mediation is definitely a way that we can help people move through that process. And it doesn't have to happen all in one session or, or you know, immediately. Um, but the flexibility of mediation as well is something that people are often unaware of. It may be that you can make certain decisions now, but need to go away and either get some more information or just, you know, allow a little bit of time before you 
continue that conversation and move on to the next step. Uh, I agree with what you say in terms of awareness as well. And I was wondering, Samara, in terms of your um, community-based work and your um, SEND mediation work, your special, special education needs, um, is that something that um, you, you think people have an awareness that family mediation is available? A and also, just a side question on that, how did you become aware of family mediation? Um, I think with the SEND mediation, um, family mediation isn't really discussed. I think for me, the question I always get asked is, what is mediation? Because I say I'm a mediator. So the first question they ask is, what is mediation? What do you do? So again, I, I agree with Tohita. Uh, it is about raising awareness. So everybody that I talk to, I am always talking about mediation and I'm always encouraging them to become a mediator, a train as a mediator. Um, in terms of your second question, Anthony, what was that again? Sorry, it was just in terms of your, your own journey. How did you become aware of family mediation? Because it, it's obviously something that you were already working as a mediator. Um, so I imagine it was it was through that, was it? Um, it was a bit of both. Um, as I said, when I was at bar school, we did I did family law. Um, sure. But then I didn't know how it quite worked with doing family law and then I didn't even know it was family mediation that was a possibility. So again, it was a, a lot of research that I did myself. Um, and then when I was with Community Accord, um, we had a few discussions about family mediation. It was uh, an area that the company were looking into uh, and, and I had an interest and my PPC, uh, she um, is a family mediator. So I had quite a lot of discussions with her. So it's about connections somebody that you know um, that you can have a discussion with um, and so I had a really detailed discussion with her about family mediation and she answered all my questions uh, and that uh, propelled me to uh, apply for the family mediation training. Great yeah and, and there's so many you know opportunities like that as you say there's so many of, of us who are willing to speak to people that are considering uh, becoming family mediators and also people who are considering whether family mediation is a service that they might need. Um, there's so many resources available and as part of Family Mediation Week, we're, we're adding to that resource pool really. And also the Family Mediation Council's website um, allows people to, to search um, for, for their local mediator. So that's been really, really interesting to, to hear from the two of you. I, I wonder before we wrap up, whether there's any sort of final words or final thoughts from either of you in terms of um, you know, family mediation being a, a tool, I guess that's available. Um, as you've both mentioned, it's available virtually so we can we can access um, any clients, any families that may need assistance at, at any point as well. Um, any closing thoughts from the two of you? I would say that quite often when people come to mediation, they don't realise that apart from trying to help them deal with the issue, whether it's financially um, related or child related, Often mediators find them, find them, they are helping the couple deal with communication, especially if they're parents, they're going to have to continue to communicate with each other for the sake of the parent going forward. And that's an added bonus because quite often the other dispute resolution methods can't deal with things like communication and um, other relevant aspects. So I think mediation is all encompassing and that's, that could be really, really helpful. Yeah, it's so, so often the case that when people come to mediation, it's, it's sometimes those discussions that take place during that session that end up having um, so much more of an impact in terms of the, the change and the transformation rather than the, the agreements itself, rather than that written agreement, it's the, the conversations that take place to get there. So I think that's, that's a, a great thought. And, and from your, yourself, Samara, is there anything from you? Yeah, I'd just like to say if anybody, if you have an interest about resolving disputes or you're always, if there's quarrels going on with work colleagues or family members uh, and you're one of those people that enjoys um, assisting people with resolving any conflict, definitely look into mediation and family mediation especially. Um, there's a lot of online resources, information available about training and how you can join and especially afterwards now with the PPC, I know on the Family Mediation Association, there's information about PPCs. Um, so I'd say me just starting my journey as a family mediator, there's a lots of resources available online. And yeah, I definitely make use of those. That's really helped me. Great. 
thank you both so much for, for joining me today. And um, really, really appreciate your time.